Welcome to another episode of ASTR, the video magazine brought to you by the General Conference Office of Archives, Statistics and Research, which brings together the Adventist past and present in order to inspire for the future. In episode 24, we start with what happened this week in Adventist history. Then Dr. Dragoslava Santrak, managing editor of the Encyclopedia of Seventh-day Adventists, shares another inspiring story from the ESDA, this time about one of the earliest Adventist ministers from the country of Myanmar. Last, Meredith Carter, editor of the annual statistical report, shares about the history of Adventist health food industries and current statistics relating to them. We hope you enjoy the episode. Welcome to This Week in Adventist History. On December 14, 2022, Bert Beverly Beach, church leader and notable religious liberty advocate, died in Silver Spring, Maryland at the age of 94. Bert was born on June 15, 1928 in Glande, Switzerland, where his parents Walter and Gladys were serving as missionaries. Bert spent his childhood and adolescence in Switzerland, including during World War II, and he was fluent in several European languages. In 1948, Bert graduated from Pacific Union College and began his service to the church as an elementary school principal in Northern California. Three years later, he and his Belgian wife, Eliane, went as missionaries to France where Bert worked as an evangelist for a year until, in 1952, he was called to Italy to be principal of the Instituto Aventista di Cultura Biblica, or the Italian Union Training School, at Villa Aurora in Florence. Bert served there for six years, during which time he studied at the famous Sorbonne in Paris, earning a PhD in French and American history. From 1958 to 1960, he taught at Washington Missionary College, today's Washington Adventist University, before he and Eliane returned to Europe, but this time to just outside London to lead the Northern European Division's education and Sabbath school departments. This photograph shows him in 1970. Bert worked in those two departments until 1973 adding the leadership of the division's Public Affairs and Religious Liberty Department. Notably, he was the World Church's observer at the Second Vatican Council, attending a number of meetings from 1962 to 66, writing many reports about the experience for church papers. In 1973, Bert was elected Secretary of the Northern European Division, a role he filled until 1980. This photograph shows him as Division Secretary in 1979. At the 1980 General Conference session in Dallas, Burt was elected Director of the General Conference Public Affairs and Religious Liberty Department. He served in that capacity for 15 years until retiring in 1995. He was a notable religious ambassador for the Seventh-day Adventist Church serving for many years as Secretary of the Conference of Christian World Communions. Bert continued to work part-time for the General Conference for several years after his retirement, and as an erudite and witty speaker, Bert continued to be much in demand for keynote addresses around the world. He was also a widely published author, most notably of the books Ecumenism, Boone or Bain, and Pattern for Progress, the Role and Function of Church Organization. Bert Beach passed away one year ago this week. On December 16 in 1915, Vernon Paul Nye was born in the U.S. state of New York. Nye married his childhood sweetheart Nora Neffel on August 14, 1938. Vernon and Nora had a son named Gilbert, and a daughter named Paulette. In 1941, aged 26, Nye began working as an illustrator for the Review and Herald Publishing Association in Tacoma Park, Maryland. 
After 14 years with the review, Nye moved to the Napa Valley in California, where he became an art professor at Pacific Union College in 1955. As chair of the art department for 21 years, he expanded the college's art program to offer bachelor's degrees. After Nye left PUC in 1975, he shared his artistic talent and passion for teaching at Walla Walla College, Atlantic Union College, and Loma Linda University. Nye was a member of the American Watercolor Society and was awarded the prestigious Edgar A. Whitney Award for his work. He continued to paint into his long retirement. Nora Nye died in 2009. Vernon Nye passed away July 24, 2013 at the age of 97. Many Adventists will be familiar with Nye's paintings of Adventist history which are frequently reproduced. You can read more about Vernon Nye in the Encyclopedia of Seventh-day Adventists at encyclopedia.adventist.org. And that was this week in Seventh-day Adventist History. Did you know that one of the founders of the Adventist Church in Myanmar was a Burmese royalty? His name was Mong Mong, and today's story from the Encyclopedia of Seventh-day Adventist ESDA, which can be freely accessed at encyclopedia.adventist.org, is about him. Mong Mong was born on May 7, 1862. His father and grandfather were descendants of an old Burmese royal family. His mother was a granddaughter of Thumana, the last king of the Mon kingdom of Baryabati. His father was Mong Baik, a Woon or governor of Henzada under the king of Burma just before the Second Burmese War. His father, mother, and grandfather, Prince Suthi, were among the early converts to Christianity in Myanmar, then Burma. Mong Mong received a good education, having an interest in medicine and the care of the sick. He and his wife, Ima, had only one daughter, Mathantin, who later became one of the best translators in the Myanmar Adventist Church. Mong Mong heard the Sabbath message from his sister, Ma Mei. Shortly before the first Seventh-day Adventist missionary came to Myanmar, his sister learned from reading her Bible that Saturday was the Sabbath, God's holy day, and she began to observe it. Later, Herbert Benjamin Mayers, a pioneer colporteur in Myanmar, held Bible studies with her and Mong Mong, with the result that the Mong left his well-paid government position and began to preach his newfound faith among the Burmese people at his own expense. Mong translated several Adventist tracts and, at his own expense, printed them and distributed them. In 1904, Mong attended a meeting of Seventh-day Adventist workers in Calcutta, again at his own expense. His plea for the establishment of regular Adventist work in Myanmar led to the assignment of Heber H. Wotau to the field. Mong was the first to be baptized by Wotau, who arrived in Myanmar in 1905. On Sabbath, March 23, 1907, the first church in Myanmar was organized by Wotau with 23 members. The next day, nine persons were baptized by Wotau amid the beautiful surroundings of the Royal Lakes. The officers of the First Adventist Church in Myanmar were Heber H. Wotau, elder, Mong Mong and David Hpohla, deacons, Anna Speer, 
church clerk, and Carolyn Votau, treasurer. This photo of Adventist workers in Myanmar was taken in 1913. Mong is standing in the back row, fourth from the left. Mong was ordained to the gospel ministry in 1927. For nearly 30 years, Mong gave his time and strength to preaching in the villages and towns, treating and praying for the sick, translating and writing, and pastoring and evangelizing. Mong died in Thonze, Myanmar, on July 2, 1936. Early in the year, he contracted dysentery and his strength gradually failed. He was conscious until the very last and assured those with him of his hope in the first resurrection. Although the funeral was held on a rainy day, about 500 Christian and Buddhist friends attended. To read more articles about the Adventist history in Asia and the other parts of the world, please visit the Encyclopedia of Seventh-day Adventists at encyclopedia.adventist.org. That's encyclopedia.adventist.org. Welcome to Adventist Research. Today we'll talk about global research projects commissioned by the General Conference in recent years. We have Dr. Trim here, Director of the Office of Archive Statistics and Research, which is responsible for overseeing research projects. Dr. Trim, this year four global research projects have been completed. What projects were they and who led these projects in division? Thank you, Galena. Our office is commissioned to gather and analyze data for strategic planning. This year, we completed Global Church Member Survey 3, an Adventist Pastors Survey, a Church Leadership Survey, and an Institutional Workers Survey. We contracted with several research teams who carried out these projects in division. The Adventist Pastors Survey and Institutional Workers Survey were led by Dr. Robert McIver and his research teams from Avondale University in Australia. The Church Leadership Survey was carried out by our office with the help of Division Secretaries. As for Global Church Member Survey 3, we had eight research teams. First was what we call the Meta-Analysis Research Team with Drs. Carl Bailey, Dwayne McBride and Shannon Tricartan from Andrews University. They developed the questionnaire for the survey and analyzed the overall global data. Dr. Elizabeth Roll and her team were responsible for administrating this survey in three African divisions. Dr. Peter Chinchala and his teams implemented the survey in five divisions and two unions, the North American, Trans-European, Euro-Asia, Southern Asia, and Northern Asia Pacific divisions, and the Chinese Union Mission and Ukrainian Union Conference, which are attached directly to the General Conference. Rodrigo Romanelli at the South American Division Headquarters was responsible for the survey in that division. In the Inter-American Division, Dr. Andres Diaz Valadares and his team from Monte Morelos University were responsible for implementing the survey. In the Southern Asia Pacific Division, Dr. Jimmy Adil from Mountain View College headed the survey implementation team, which had members from several different universities. Dr. Peter Beamish of Avondale University led the research team in the South Pacific Division. And finally, Dr. Andreas Bachmann and his team from Friedensau University surveyed church members in the Inter-European Division. You mentioned that the Global Church Member Survey was the third of its kind. Yes. And when were the two other surveys implemented? Are there any differences between them? In 2012 and 2013, we surveyed church members in nine divisions. The sample size was more than 26,000. The second church member survey was carried out in 2017-2018 in all 13 divisions. We saw more enthusiasm and willingness in all fields to participate. The sample was more than 63,000. The third church member survey has had the largest sample, about 150,000 responses. 
Data was collected in the last two years. This time, all divisions and two attached territories participated in the project. There are some differences between the surveys apart from the size of the samples. We added some questions to surveys on the areas where we saw signs of some doctrinal confusion. For example, the state of the dead, righteousness by faith, and health issues. And we clarified some questions to get more precise answers. Do we have any data on the commitment of our members to the Seventh-day Adventist Church? Yes, Galina. In the 2018 Church Member Survey, we asked this question that you see on the screen. A majority said it would be very likely for them to attend the Adventist Church for the rest of their lives. 82% said that. You mentioned the Global Adventist Pastor Survey. Is this the first one who have participated in it? Thank you, Galena. We conducted a similar survey 10 years ago in 2012-2013 with the help of Dr. Roger Dudley of the Institute of Church Ministry. Last time, the sample was 4,260 pastors. This time, it is 12,760. This survey was of pastors working in local congregations and not administrators. It would be interesting to know how pastors view their calling. Can you share the results from the previous survey? Yes, the findings were very pleasing. 96% of pastors said that they knew that God had called them to be a pastor. 95% reported that they enjoyed being a pastor. And 91% affirmed that being a pastor seems to fit their spiritual gifts. We asked similar questions in the New Adventist Pastors Survey. We also asked whether they have some concerns, need more support, more education, are supported by their families, and so on. Yes, pastoral ministry is not easy. A pastor should feel God's call to be able to go through all the hardships and sacrifices that pastoral ministry brings. We don't talk much about church administrators, actually. Their work also include moving to other places, traveling, being absent from their families uh, almost regularly, actually. So do we have any data on their family support? Yes, we asked this question last time and this time too. Uh, and the, the question should go up on the screen in a minute. Findings from the 2018 Church Leadership Survey show that fortunately, families of our church leaders support their ministry. 80% said they support it to a very large extent, and an additional 16% said they support them to a large extent. Very good. Regarding the Institutional Workers Survey, it took a long time to finish it. Employees from what Adventist institutions have participated in it? Yes, we started this project in 2016 and completed it this year. We received 13,669 completed questionnaires from employees who worked in Adventist educational institutions, mm -hmm. including preschool, elementary or primary, secondary and tertiary institutions, and who worked in hospitals and clinics, media centers, publishing houses, food industries, and welfare agencies, including ADRA. These surveys are really impressive. But when and where can our viewers see the findings of these global projects? Galena, the public release of data will be in January 2024, and it will be on our website, adventistresearch.info. That's adventistresearch.info. Reports from previous surveys are also available under the Reports button at the top of the, the web page. Choose their Research Projects commissioned by the General Conference, and it will take you to the reports. Now there is a survey fatigue, actually, because people are surveyed at every step. Did you feel this too? Are you grateful to those about 180,000 Adventists around the world who took part in this global project? Yes, indeed, we're very grateful to this extraordinary number of church members. The fatigue is there, especially with longer surveys. We plan to make the church members survey shorter next time. And we are very grateful to everyone who helped the world church to get the data. We are also thankful to the divisions that helped facilitate data collection. We've shared the research data with division administration and with all who are interested in research. Again, visit adventistresearch.info where you can sign up for our research newsletter and read our blogs. We believe this will bring positive changes in your life 
and in the ministry of your church or organization. Welcome to a new segment from the ASDR Data Collection and Publication Team. In this episode's Statistical Nugget, we will explore the topic of food industries in the worldwide Seventh-day Adventist Church. The Seventh-day Adventist Church belief in the importance of positive lifestyle habits and improved health and wellness was present from early in Seventh-day Adventist history, predating the organization of the church. Ellen White's early visions emphasized the detrimental effects of eating meat, overeating, especially rich foods, and the use of drugs and stimulants, such as alcohol, tobacco, and coffee. Regular exercise, pure water, and fresh air are believed to be essential in maintaining and restoring health. Because of her visions, members started to practice these health ideas and began to adopt them as part of the preferred lifestyle. In May 1866, the Seventh-day Adventist Church proposed the development of a health institute and purchased a nine-acre property in Battle Creek, Michigan, known as the Western Health Reform Institute. In 1876, Dr. John Harvey Kellogg was appointed to run the health program and he changed the name of the institute to the Battle Creek Sanitarium. The health program emphasized healthy vegetarian diets, exercise, fresh air, water and muscular therapies, massage, good posture, and abstinence from alcohol, tobacco, and caffeine. As the world church grew, so did the message of health and wellness and the desire to produce healthy vegetarian food. John Kellogg and his brother, Will Keith Kellogg, began developing breakfast cereals and other healthy foods and selling them. In 1898, Edward Halsey opened a small bakery in Melbourne, Australia, where he began selling products under the brand of Sanitarium. As the popularity of Sanitarium products grew, Adventists opened cafes throughout Australia and eventually food industries opened worldwide. As of 2022, there are 23 food industries worldwide located in the Inter-America Division, Inter-European Division, Northern Asia Pacific Division, South American Division, and the South Pacific Division. There is a total of 3,389 full-time employees who manufactured 2,038 products with food industry sales of over 971 million in 2022. The production of health foods is undoubtedly having an impact in furthering the Adventist message of health and wellness worldwide. Visit healthministries.com to learn more on Avenus Health Initiatives and to find resources. For more information on world statistics of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, go to AdventistStatistics.org. That's AdventistStatistics.org. We're so glad you chose to spend the last 20 minutes with those of us who work in the General Conference Office of Archives, Statistics, and Research. We enjoy finding interesting and inspiring stories from the Seventh-day Adventist Church of yesterday and today to share with you. And if you've enjoyed this episode, please like this program on YouTube and tell your friends about it. If you want more historic and current Adventist content, follow us on Facebook, on X, what used to be called Twitter, or on Instagram. We're active on all those social media channels. We look forward to seeing you on the next episode when we will bring together more of the Adventist Church's past and present in order to inspire for the future.